Hello and welcome along. I'm Nigel. This is Nigel's Modeling Bench. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe down there. And if you want to get notified of when I'm bringing any new videos out, then hit the notifications bell as well. So here today we are working on part six of the Hatchet Parks work, Part Works Lancaster Bomber B3, and this one is the Dambuster version. And um, this is part of bundle two. If you want to subscribe to this and build along with me, you can. I'll put a shot up now. There's a QR code there you can scan with your phone. That'll take you to the website. And across the bottom there, you've got the website if you want to go the old fashioned way and type it in on your search engine or whatever. But um, you can go down there and you can see uh, how you can get there, how much it's going to cost and everything like that. You will notice if you look as of today, today is the 25th of March, 23rd of March, 2024. Um, and at the moment, as we stand, it's saying part one and two are out of stock. I've seen parts one and two out of stock before. They do come back in stock, so don't worry. And if you do want to subscribe, you can actually subscribe from part one. If you've already got sort of part one to seven or something and you want to, or one to five and you want to subscribe from part six, then you can and you will get with your first order, you will get one issue free and a free gift. And then in your second bundle, you will get this lovely pen, which is why I'm showing you this, because this is part of the second bundle. You get three, four, five and six as your second bundle. And you get this lovely pen. And if you have been watching and you're fed up with seeing it, don't worry. This is the last time I'll show you it. But there we are. Lancaster Bomber pen. You can see Lancaster Bomber B3 in there. Lovely turned wood finish and all turned brass fittings and everything very very nice indeed when you get yours um it's got a white nib on the end it almost looks like it's a an eraser or rubber uh just get it just pull it off with your fingers it's like a protective rubber i think to um, just stop it leaking and transit or whatever so there we are so that's beautifully presented lovely lovely little pen so there we are and that's that's a free gift with bundle two so here we have part six and in here we are looking at i didn't realize that was split open and in here we are looking at the um, instrument panel, I believe, from memory, and all the control levers and everything, which are in photo etch metal. And if you think you've seen me do this before, no, you're not going mad. I have actually reviewed this before on the channel. I started building this, um, got in touch with Hashet and said, would you like to sponsor a build on my channel? They said yes. So now they are sending me these, which is why you'll see paid promotion at the beginning of the videos, because Hashet are... Um, kindly sponsoring this build. So let's have a look at this. So we start off by uh, going into the magazine and over here we have all the bump about how you can get in touch with them wherever you are in the world and everything. And this is basically a contents of this magazine. Down there you can see how the finished model is going to look. And you can see it there on its base with the dam and everything just about to drop the bomb. Um, it has working undercarriage, working propellers, noises, guns, um, the bomb spins. All sorts of stuff like that. Two main things to cover straight away. People say the propellers spin the wrong way round. If you go back to part one, I show you how to cure that. But don't do it yet because they may well in their software, in their software, um, reverse the polarity and make the motor spin the other way. And if you're worried about the propeller pitch, I've shown you how to change that as well. So um, the other thing people talk about is there's no dihedral. This is a pre-production model and Hasha have assured us all that that uh, dihedral will be there on your model when you get it. So we have our parts list. So this is everything we've got in the box. So this is our box here, which is as yet to be opened. And you can see we've got photo etch control levers. We've got instrument panel parts. We've got the uh, yoke there. We've got a compass, we've got DF loop, we've got rudder pedals, a turtle deck, lots and lots of bits and pieces going on. So here we've got our instructions on how to build. But as usual, what we will do, we will skip past all that and we will look at quickly what's in the magazine. So Lancaster FM 104, this is one Lancaster that still exists. Um, she was built in Canada and she's still in Canada now. Um, and there she is there, uh, built at the Victory Aircraft Factory in Canada. One of 430 Lancasters that were built during World War II. So we had American engines, we had British engines, we had Canadian aircraft, we had everything. Uh, the real proper allied uh, allied effort to get them all um, get them all sorted. And um and uh, during the so-called duck butt operations, Lancaster FM 104 escorted other Royal Canadian aircraft, Air Force aircraft across the wide expanses of the Atlantic. So 
quite a history and there she is there being restored if you want to have a look, um, have a look and read up on this one there's lots of information on youtube about fm 104 she's got quite an interesting history she's been up and down and um finally now she's starting to come together so it's nice to see but uh, it's a proper it's set here a dedicated group of enthusiasts they are a proper dedicated group of enthusiasts i can assure you have i missed a page there i thought i'd missed a page no i haven't so here we've got the thousand bombers uh, mid 42 raf Bomber Command assembled a thousand bombers to attach to attack a large city in Germany. The target was Cologne, which was flattened in a terrifying display of aerial bombing power. It's a terrible, terrible state of affairs. That uh, you know, Germany and the UK were just in the England were just doing to each other backwards and forwards. It was it was awful. It was called area bombing rather than strategic, you know, targets of um, you know RAF bases or um radar towers or whatever they just carpet bomb cities to break down the morale you can see there it's terrible uh the center of cologne following the thousand bomber raid uh the city's cathedral can be seen in the top left hand corner of the photograph it's um shocking anyway that's all in the past um spitfire versus hurricane the spitfire and hurricane were two of the greatest warplanes of the 20th century but which one was the best fighter aircraft and you could read all this it'll tell you all about it and on the back here, we've got coming in issue seven, which I should have for you very shortly. I have some good news. I'm actually running behind the other YouTubers with my videos. Um, I've been in touch with Hashat and said, can I sort of catch up, please? And they're sending me all the issues to catch up. So um, there's, we're going to be busy with this over the next few weeks. And then we'll go back to sort of four a month or whatever. So in SU7, we're going to be building the model. We've got history and legacy. S for Sugar, which was, uh, she's in um, Hendon. Um, and then Battle for the Skies after 1918, Germany seethed with discontent. There we go. And then we got all those parts coming in part seven. No, you're not going mad. You have seen me do this. This is actually part seven is the last part that I've already done. So after part seven, we'll get on to part It's eight. also worth remembering that very shortly I will be building out a small, bringing out a small series of videos on how to make some small changes to this model to make it a little bit more accurate and change some colours and stuff. But um, there we go. Right. So... Going through the magazine, we are going to start working on building our cockpit parts from part six. So here we have our contents. So we will, I'm going to put the light on now because we're doing modeling, not just looking at the magazine. So we're going to open up this box, which is uh, nicely packaged. And once again, we've got a ton of Ziploc bags, which is good. They're always good for, the, uh, for putting parts in. So here we've got our turtle deck. So that's that part on its own here we've got instrument panel parts so what we can do is just check we've got everything and um, i wouldn't recommend you do this but this is what i do so you can see how i check the parts but basically i'm going to lay these parts out as they are in here and then we can check that we've actually got everything that we should have so we have the control column there we have a rudder pedal and another rudder pedal and we have a DF loop and that little bit there, whatever that may be. We have the compass there and the control yoke. What do they call it? Yeah, they do call it a control yoke. And then we've got our two photo etch panels there. We'll get those out so we don't have to fuss with them later there we go so that's those two there and then we've got our our turtle deck there okay so that's all the parts laid out so now we can see what we've got and we can see that we've got everything there as per the book right so let's go into the book and have a look. So the first part to do is to fit our DF. They call it, a, there's a few mistakes in here, I've noticed. Um, take the whip aerial. That's hardly a whip aerial, it's a DF loop. It's a direction finding loop. Now I'm not gonna glue mine in because I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use, but this needs to change color. This is actually, um, this, this here should not be interior green. This should be the same color as the camouflage on the exterior. So I'm not going to paint it yet, but I will paint it when we come to do it. So that's going to push into there like that. And it doesn't really want to go in. 
and I can see why. If you look on here, on the front you can see a circle, a moulded circle, and that is called an ejector pin mark. What I'm going to do is just use my knife just to cut that away. Okay, just like so. And then that will go into that hole beautifully, he says. Okay, there is something else stopping it then. So rather than just force it and break things, what I'm going to do is get my pointed knife and just come into the back of this hole here and just scrape away some plastic. There's probably some plastic flash or a build-up of paint or something there. Something is stopping this going in. That is really weird. There we go. It's all the way in now. There we go. So that's it. Now I'm not going to glue that in position, as I say, because... Because I want to, in fact, I will glue it in position because I can just mask it off and I need to paint it. So I'm going to take my Pringles lid. I'm going to use some of my favourite glue, which is Flexi 5 KCA from VMS. And this one is the uh, version, this is for PE. There's lots of different ones. You'll see me a lot of the time using a black one, which is really nice. But for this, I'm using clear. And what I'm going to do is just put a drop of the super glue on the back of there, just like so. Okay, and that way you're not making any marks on the front. If you put the glue on the front, you push that in, sometimes the glue can come out the sides and leave a shiny wet mark. Okay, and then there's the recess. If you remember the last part, we talked about not gluing that part in. It wasn't the last part, it was part four, wasn't it? Not gluing the, um, the armour plate in. Well, I, that's why, because it's going to sit in there. So that's that done. Okay, so that's, that's the first step. Now it's telling us to fit the... the Check the fit of the tab on the back of the control yoke in the slot in the control column. If necessary, glue the part in place. So it's telling us to check the fit. So it's obviously got a D-shaped hole so it goes in the right way. And that's going to go in there. Okay, so that's going to go in there like that. And then, there we go. So that does need gluing into place. Now, if you are going to use the beautiful pilot figure that I showed you from, um, from Wings Cockpit Figures, I did a review of it, you go back and have a look. Absolutely gorgeous. The actual control yoke is in the pilot's hand, so you won't glue that on. You'll glue the, you could glue the whole column in from that, uh, from that set. Or you could just use the control yoke. So that's that done. So what they're asking us to do now is fit that control column onto that cockpit pedestal. So this is going to go in like this. You can see that fits in there absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is take that out of there and I'm just going to put a drop of glue in the middle with a cocktail stick. Just like so. Just need a small drop. It's not a structural part, it's not like a, it's not going to have an engine hanging off it or something like that, it's just going to sit there. And there we go, you can see our cockpit is coming together beautifully. Now for a Partworks model, I must say, this is gorgeous, it really is. Oh, the other thing I forgot to show you in the last part, I've just went over there, I used some, this is Game Workshop's Viejo colour, and it's called uh, 72028 Dark Green, and that's what I've used, to just brush that over the top of those armrests so that they are, um, if you remember, I sanded away a, a big mark on them and now they're painted and they match the rest of the, the leather on the seat and everything. So that's all good. Right. So that's that bit done. Right. Um, check how the instrument panel 06B and the panel 06J fit together. Three pegs on the back of the part. Uh, fit into holes in part 06J, glue the pegs in place. So once again, what we'll do is we'll take the instrument panel here, which is very nicely done. And then we will see how this fits. And that fits in there nicely. Okay, very thick, very deep. But, um, there we go and what we can do here is just put a drop of glue on the back of each of those three pins 
and that will just retain that in position just like so okay that, that glue or capillary down the edge if you just want to make sure what you can do is come in with a with some sort of pointed tool and just lift that panel up a bit and then push it back down and that will help the glue capillary down in there all right don't be tempted to put this down and press it because you'll snap all these uh, airspeed indicators and alt altimeters or whatever they are. There we go. That's that glued in place and we can see our instruments there. And if you watch my other videos, when I do the modifications, I'll show you how to make those look even better. So there we are. So that's that glued in. And then we're going over to part five and we've got to fit the compass. So here is our compass. We've got this D-shaped pin on the back of there. Nice to see they've got the compass the right colour and the light grey. And that's just going to pop into there. Like that. That's a really tight fit. So we don't really need any glue, but we'll put a drop in there. Just going to put another drop of glue on here. Just like so. These Pringles lids are great for putting the glue on because once it's dry, you can just break the glue off because it doesn't stick to um, it doesn't stick to the Pringles lid, so it just flakes off. So that's our compass fitted. Now, this is where the Partworks guys, Partworks modelers, may have never done this before. So we've got to fit these levers. We've got the first one, which is the red one, and then we've got five of the ordinary ones. Um, so they're telling us here, control lever 06i is the red one, and 06f, which is these five here, fit into the slots in the front of the instrument panel. The red lever goes on the left. Work in a clear area so you can find any levers if you drop them. You may find it helpful to use tweezers working from left to right. Glue each lever in place and allow to dry before fitting the next. Now, they don't tell you in the instructions how to cut these off, and I haven't done this before. Now, this is stainless steel. So it's going to be very hard. Now, what you can do is come in with a knife. OK, you can see that one side, one side you can see has an engraved or an etched slot in it. The other side is plain. If you look at that, you can see this one. This one is plain, it's smooth. And this one has an undercut in it. So that is the side you can cut. Now, I'm not sure. finger over it no now I think probably the best way to do this is going to be to take a pair of tweezers push it through and snap it off that's going to be the best way to get those off I use this if you want to cut with a knife don't cut on a soft mat because what will happen is you will bend the metal down as you cut it so you always use a nice hard this is just a sheet of acrylic so we're going to do the red one first and I'm hoping I don't scratch the paint but uh, the paint is very thick, so it's probably it's probably going to easily scratch off. If not, we can always touch it up with some red paint afterwards. So we just snap that off of there, and it's going that way round. So you can see on here, as you can see, there's a little nubbin on the bottom, and it's pointing upwards. And this is going to go into that slot there. And it's a very tight fit, unfortunately, probably because of all the paint. So what I'm going to do, it's got a very thick coat of paint on it. What I'm going to do is with my knife is just remove said paint from the bottom. Just like so. Oh, come here. Come on, bloody tweezers. Let's see if it goes in there now. Yes. Okay, so that's fitting in there now. And don't worry about having them all perfectly level because they wouldn't necessarily all be level. So what we can do 
is just take this lever, dip it in our super glue. So now you can see why I've used clear. I'm just going to push that into place in its slot. Just like so. Make sure it's facing backwards. Okay. I must say, this is very, very nice. This is, um, I mean, the, the, the moulding of the border model instrument panel is probably nicer than this one, but you don't get these photo etch levers in the border model or the Hong Kong models kit. So, you know, it's a nice touch. In fact, I did when I reviewed this, first of all, I said it's worth buying parts five and six for the extra bits that you don't get in the Hong Kong models kit. Is that going to fit into there? They are very tight going into these slots. Yep. Okay, so we're going to dip that in some super glue. Just like so. And then push that down into there. There we go, it's gone in. Gone into there, lovely. Okay, and now we're just going to take this one here, and I'm not going to bother test fitting anymore because I know they're tight. But what happens is when we put the super glue on there, the super glue will dissolve the paint that's making it tight. So once you put it in with super glue, it will go in a lot easier. There we go. There we go, that's gone in there, just like that. So I'm going to turn the camera off now and do these other three so you don't have to just watch me sitting here doing this. And then I'll come back when we move on to the next step. So they're in. All looking lovely. Very, very nice indeed. Really nice. Okay, so now we've got our throttle levers and our pitch control. Um, so there's a little mistake in the instructions here. It says fit the four levers 06G into the slots of the top of control unit. And then it says similarly fit the four levers 06G so these are 06G and I believe the air screw speed or pitch, whatever you go, I think, yeah, they're H. So these are 06H, those are 06G. So don't get confused by that, although it's quite obvious when you look at them. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll snap these off. So we'll just bend that one out of there. And then with our tweezers, snap from the bottom. Don't try and snap from the top or you'll probably bend the lever. So they go in with the little pointy bit facing backwards. And we're going to look at that like that. So they are basically going to sit in that slot and they fit in there easily. So that's good. So again, we'll start from the left. So that's going to go into that slot there, just like so. And then I'm going to come along with a cotton bud and just touch the top just to mop up any excess glue. There we are, so that's that one in there. You can take another one. I would suggest not um, snapping them all off and then having to pick them up because that's when you risk having them pinging out of your tweezers and getting lost forever in the carpet. So that one's going to go into there like so. Now, really, the outer two should be taller than the inner two and bend over on the top. So if you want to go for accuracy, you could just shorten two of them and then bend the two top ones in. But they did actually sort of go in like that pattern. So we can snap that one off of there. If you're really fussy, you could file that little nubbin off the bottom of there. But um, it's not really necessary. As I say, I mean, they... It's nice to have them all lined up, but in reality, 
they will probably never be perfectly lined up. Remember, if you're doing, if you're going to use those figures that I showed you in another review, as I mentioned earlier, the flight engineer will be standing here next to the pilot and he'll have his hand on these levers, obviously controlling the, um, the speed because the actual speed of the aircraft has to be spot on for dropping the bomb. It was a proper multi-man thing. You had the navigator telling the pilot up, down, up, down, up, down. You had the flight engineer on the throttles. You had the bomb aimer at the front in control of the bomb dropping. And the wireless operator ready to signal the, the result. There we are, and then we can just use our tweezers just to pry these about a little bit. I'm going to grab a cotton bud and just wipe off any excess glue from there. We can see they're in nice and solid. And then these, we'll just do one of these and then I'll turn the camera off and do put the rest in. Don't want to bore you to death with this. So these go in. They look like a pair of shoes, but you've got the heel there and there's the toe. And what they're telling you to do... The levers are very close together, so fit the heel first and then push the toe down. Okay, so I think what they're saying is that's the heel. Let's see how this works. Fit the heel first and press the toe down. Is that right? I guess it must be. So we'll just put a drop of glue on the back of there. And there we go. Push that into there. And they can sit like that. Just do one more. I'm not going to bother test fitting because I know they're going to fit. There we are, we can get those in just like that. And I'll come back in a second and show you how it looks when they're all in. Okay, so there we go, that's all those levers in. So you can see this is absolutely gorgeous. That is nicer than the Hong Kong models or the border models. So uh, for those that think this is like a toy, let's see what the future brings. Right, so that's that all done. So that's, we're done up to there. So going over the page now, they're asking us to fit this. So the pegs on the back of the controller to fit in the holes in this room. Note that the pegs are different sizes and fit the corresponding holes. Glue in place as shown on the right. So we are going to fit that piece into there. And you can see there we've got our throttle levers and everything all looking absolutely stunning. And that does need to be glued, guys. So what I'm going to do is put some glue in the hole rather than put the glue on the peg because if you put the glue on the peg I need some more if you put the glue on the peg as you push the peg in I'm going to show you something now come on if you can imagine this is your hole and this is your peg who misses if you put the glue in the hole as the peg goes in it will take the glue with it if you put the glue on the peg it will just push the glue up the peg and you end up with a bit of a mess I'm going to grab another cocktail stick because I, this that end of that one is too big to get into the hole properly. So we're going to get some glue into that hole. And we're going to get some glue into that hole, keeping the glue away from the upper part of the hull. Hull, hole even. And I'm just going to push that in. Just like so. And there we go, that's in like that. Make sure it's square. And there we are, that's gone in there like that. And the next part is this piece here, 06N. They're asking us to fit that into there. That's going to go in there. And I don't think that's going to need glue. But what we can do 
it's just with our cocktail stick it's just put a drop of glue on the top just to lock it in and there we go that's that in there now it's asking us to fit the rudder pedals so we've got two different parts here so we've got 06 D which is this one you can see the difference here we've got 06 E so we're going to put 06 D in first so that's going to fit into those two holes there and I don't think that's going to need any glue no it's not and then we've got 06 E which is going to fit into those two holes there so those two holes there on an angle and I've put it upside down there we go that's gone in there again I don't think that needs gluing so there is our instrument panel complete as per the book as I say I'm doing a modified one and I will show you how to tart it up a little bit so this is now going to glue down onto our pedestal our pilot's pedestal and it looks like it's going to be quite a snug fit it does fit you can see now we've got the the instrument panel and the complete cockpit area there all done really really nice it, it is very very nice guys honestly it really is so what i'm going to do here is put some glue in the slot just put a drop either side and then we can slide that into there just like so and there we are that is in so there we go that's our cockpit done so we can see here, um, this is how it should look. Notice those two pipes at the back there, I've left them off because they will get broken off. Remember, I left those off. So that's going to go in there like that. And then we've also got at the end here, you can see what we've done. So that's going to go like that. Now I'm wondering if, if um, I think I've mentioned this before, I'm wondering if Hachette intend to give us decals for any of this. I don't think they do. So if we, on the other one, I'll show you how, where I can get some, where you can get some decals from and actually add them and improve the look of the instrument panel by putting some decals in here and in here and on the compass and everything. But uh, that's for another day. So there we go, guys. Just give you another look at that. Really is. I mean, those belts aren't very nice, but you know, they're, they're there. <laughs> they're on there. The detail in that is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice. Okay, so there we are. Thank you for watching. As I say, if you want to join in with me, you can go onto the Hatchet website, order yourself one. Um, yes, it's expensive because everybody always comments that these part works work out quite expensive. But when you actually look at the size of the model and you look at what it does and you look at what it is and you look at the market it's aimed for, um, it's actually not that expensive. Um, you know, if, if you go and buy the Border Models kit, yes, it's a more accurate model at the end of the day. But I've said this before, you need, you know, a lot of skill to build that model. You need a lot of um, paints and glues. And then at the end of the day, after you've built it, you have a static model, which is just stood there. You know, if you want a working model that's got all working lights and sounds and everything, then, you know, this is bloody awesome it really is lovely and in some respects this is nicer than either of the plastic kits available so yeah really 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 lovely and i haven't added you know there's no particular tools no particular skill gone into it really um you know there's a few little tips and techniques that i've shown you but you know other than just taking it out of the bag and putting it all together you know there's well, i put a little bit of paint on there which you don't have to other than that, that is totally how it comes in the kit. So there's no reason why you can't build one and it looks like this. So there we are. Thank you for watching. I will see you all very soon for part seven. 
I say very soon, it depends when they actually send it to me. But um, as I say, as soon as I get part seven, I'm hoping to get like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> I'm hoping to really push forward now. I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.